Hey Swarmers! Welcome back to The Hive for our last installment of 2020. From kicking off the year with unprecedented wildfires in Australia, to a global pandemic, to fights for racial equality, contentious elections, worsening effects of climate change around the world, and now closing it out as the COVID-19 pandemic continues to take lives and hold our lives hostage, we won't be sorry to see the last of 2020. And while there's no doubt it hasn't been easy to look on the bright side, we wanted to share with you just a few of the environmental and sustainability successes of a year that might seem anything but successful. In the beginning of the pandemic, the environmental benefits seen from the lack of travel, be it to the office, shops, interstate, or internationally, for business or pleasure, became a global topic of conversation. Our waters were clearer, albeit with distinct lack of dolphins in Venetian canals. Our air was cleaner, mountains in various parts of the world were visible to nearby locals for the first time in their lifetime. And it was undeniable that carbon emissions had dropped from drastic reductions reductions in manufacturing and transit. And while we rebounded to previous levels pretty quickly, the correlation between human activity and our ability to immediately affect our environment in real time became an undeniable fact globally. This is a good thing! In order to affect change, we must first acknowledge that change is needed. In keeping with humans directly affecting our environment, a record number of endangered turtles hatched in Mexico this year. The Sari indigenous community in Mexico released more than 2,000 olive ridley sea turtles into the Gulf of California. This total far outnumbers the typical annual average of around 500 turtles. This baby boom is exciting news for the endangered turtle and is attributed to a lack of human activity and nest disturbance as a result of beaches closing during the pandemic. Amidst an unprecedented number of wildlife attacks and habitat rollbacks at the end of the Trump administration, one critter won a rare victory, the Mexican spotted owl. After a legal battle with the federal government that spanned the better part of a decade, environmental nonprofit Wild Earth Guardians announced it had finally reached a deal with the U.S. Forest Service and U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service in October. A judge approved a legal agreement requiring the U.S. Forest Service to review the impacts its activities have on this threatened species. Under the agreement, the Forest Service is required to comply with the Endangered Species Act and conduct annual spotted owl population surveys through 2025. Conservationists have fought for this outcome to ensure that logging activities don't continue to destroy the habitat of the Mexican spotted owl in the U.S. Southwest. On August 4th, 2020, the Great American Outdoors Act was signed into law to fully and permanently fund the Land and Water Conservation Fund and restore the United States' national parks. This landmark conservation legislation, which will use revenues from energy development to provide up to $1.9 billion a year for five years to provide needed maintenance for critical facilities and infrastructure in national parks, forests, wildlife refuges, recreation areas, and Native American schools. It will also use royalties from offshore oil and natural gas to permanently fund the Land and Water Conservation Fund to the tune of $900 million a year to invest in conservation and recreation opportunities across the country. The rationale behind the funding source being to take funds from a deeply harmful activity and reinvest it into something good for conservation. A new and ambitious climate law recently passed in Denmark that tries to find a way around the problem of the short-term cycles of government, like one administration overturning the plans of a previous and some of the other common pitfalls of climate laws. Its law could turn out to be one of the closest things yet to a law that would make climate change, or at least the lack of effort to stop it, genuinely illegal. Denmark's law commits the country, regardless of current leadership, to reaching 70% below its 1990 emissions in the next 11 years. The law targets carbon neutrality by 2050 and includes a robust monitoring system. New legally binding targets will be set every five years with a 10-year perspective. It makes Denmark one of a small number of countries beginning to provide new blueprints of how government can genuinely tackle climate change. 
The meat factory farming industry has long faced criticism from animal rights activists and has been attracting more scrutiny in recent years for its massive impact on climate change. We know that reducing our meat intake is a surefire way to immediately decrease our personal carbon footprint. In early December, Singapore gave regulatory approval for the world's first clean meat that does not come from slaughtered animals. The decision paves the way for San Francisco-based startup Eat Just to sell lab-grown chicken meat. This past summer, Vermont became the first state in the U.S. to ban food scraps in trash. According to the state's website, if it was once part of something alive, like a plant or animal, it does not belong in the landfill. The rule applies to individuals and businesses, including restaurants and supermarkets. Instead, Vermonters are encouraged to compost, feed food scraps to livestock, isolate the waste for trash pickup, or take it to a designated drop-off site. Removing food scraps from the trash frees up space in landfills and is critical to fighting global warming that drives climate change, according to Anne Bijour, environmental analyst with Vermont's Department of Environmental Conservation. Scotland is set to become the first country in the world to introduce LGBTQ plus inclusive lessons into the school curriculum. In 2021, all public schools will teach lessons about the LGBTQ plus community, such as same-sex marriage, same-sex parenting, homophobia, biphobia, transphobia, and the HIV AIDS epidemic. Inclusive education is a major step towards empowering and promoting the social, economic, and political inclusion of all and reducing the inequalities that prevent us from achieving sustainable development. Another shout out to Scotland for leading the way towards a more inclusive society when on November 24th, they became the first nation to provide free and universal access to sanitary products to all women, becoming a pioneer in tackling period poverty. Period poverty refers to the lack of access to basic sanitary products, menstrual education, and hygienic spaces to manage menstrual bleeding. Circumstances such as poverty, homelessness, abusive relationships, gender identity, and some health conditions make it more difficult for women and girls to manage their periods safely and with dignity. Scotland's Community Secretary Eileen Campbell hailed the passing of the legislation as a significant moment for gender equality, and that this this legislation will do much to advance equality and social justice here in Scotland and elsewhere as other countries seek to follow our path. Hidden among the more than 5,000 pages of a massive COVID-19 relief spending package just passed by the U.S. Congress includes the most significant climate legislation in more than a decade, along with significant changes in the country's energy policy. It includes $35 billion in funding for basic research, extensions of tax credits for renewable energy companies, and a long-delayed mandate to reduce the use of a particularly damaging greenhouse gas, hydrofluorocarbon, by 80 percent over 15 years. The most common HFCs are more than 1,000 times as powerful as carbon dioxide, so this is a huge step forward for the United States in enacting new policy to combat climate change, and a positive stepping off point for the future Biden administration, which has promised to rejoin the Paris Climate Agreement as soon as they take office in January. This list is absolutely not comprehensive, nor is it meant to dismiss what was an incredibly difficult year. Many of us have lost loved ones. Many of us are struggling. Many of us are sad, scared, and lonely. 2020 was brutal, but there were some incredible things that happened this year. Thanks, as always, for joining us, Swarmers. We'll be here for you next year, so let's make some sustainability-minded resolutions for ourselves, our loved ones, and our planet. We are, have been, and always will be in this together. Stay safe, stay sustainable, and have a happy, happy New Year, Swarmers. We love you. See you next time.